Disney's Moana. Chapter 9 Something landed on top of Moana, pressing her down into the warm sand. Sand? There was sand under her. Shifting her weight, Moana pushed up into daylight. Squawk! The something on top of her turned out to be Hey Hey, who flapped off, stumbling along the beach with a coconut on his head. Moana's hand flew to her throat. She exhaled as her fingers found the heart of Tafiti still securely tucked inside her grandmother's shell necklace. For a moment, she'd worried her mission was over. Now just needed to figure out where she was. Shaking herself off, Moana stood and gazed around in the daylight, taking in her surroundings. She couldn't see any trees, just low-lying bushes and craggy rocks jumping up like claws, with one tall promontory rising up to the sky. It looked like most of her supplies had washed ashore, along with her boat. Moana frowned as she spotted the canoe, tossed up on the rocks, with who knew what damage from the storm. Um... Moana turned and glared at the ocean, gesturing to her boat. What? I said, help me. And tidal waving my boat, not helping. Tap, tap, tap. Moana spun at the sound and saw Hey Hey, coconut still on his head, pecking at a large boulder. Carved into its side were hundreds and hundreds of little fish hooks all coming together to form one giant fish hook. Maui? She wondered aloud. Could this be where the demigod lived? She turned back to the ocean, realizing that it had brought her there for a reason. Oops, I guess I shouldn't have yelled, Moana thought. From among the boulders came a clattering of rocks so loud it sounded like a thunderstorm, and a huge shadow loomed up from between two rocks. Really huge. With her nerves zinging, Moana seized her oar in one hand, hey hey in the other, and ducked down behind her boat. She just needed a minute to gather herself. Maui was a demigod, after all. Maui, demigod of the wind and sea? She practiced her words quietly, trying to keep the wobble out of her voice. I am Moana of Montanui. You will board my boat. No, you will board my boat. No, you will board my boat. Yeah. I am Moana of Montanui. You will board my... (laughs) Moana trailed off, glancing around the side of the boat. His shadow had vanished. Where was he? Boat, a voice boomed. Oh, wow, he was right there. Unable to help herself, Moana let out a little squeak and ducked down. The gods have given me a bar. Moawi had started to lift the boat, but yelped as his eyes landed on Moana, tucked under the outrigger. He let go, and the boat slammed back down with a thump. Moana rolled out of the way just in time and sprang to her feet. Maui was peering down at the boat and didn't notice as she skirted around him. His broad back, five times her size, was covered in tattoos and his hair sprung out in wild waves. Okay, you can do this, Moana thought. The demigod reached down with one enormous hand and lifted the boat back up, more tentatively this time. But instead of Moana, he found Hey Hey sprawled in the sand. The rooster groaned. Huh? Maui said. Maui? Moana asked. Startled, the demigod swung around, Moana's canoe still in his hand. 
Moana slid backward to get out of the way as the bow sliced through the air. Straightening, she planted the pole end of her oar in the ground and propped her other hand on her lip, considering the demigod before her. Tattoos covered his chest and arms, and a string of what looked like teeth was hung around his neck, including a shark's tooth bigger than any Moana had ever seen. Maui? Shapeshifter? Demigod of the wind and sea? Moana paused for a deep breath. I am Moana of Monta, hero of men, Maui said. What? Moana sputtered, confused. Maui, shapeshifter, demigod of wind and sea, hero of men, I interrupted. From the top, hero of men, go. He smiled encouragingly at her, like she was a toddler reciting a poem. Uh, uh I am Moa, sorry, sorry. Moana raised his hands apologetically. And women. Men and women. Both. All. Not a guy-girl thing. Hero to all. He leaned down conspiratorially and whispered, You're doing great. What was he talking about? What? No, no, I'm here to... Moana lifted her hands, accidentally waving the oar in the air. Of course, yes. Maui always has time for his fans. Maui reached forward and took her oar. With his other hand, he plucked Heihe from the sand and used his beak to scrawl something into the wood of the oar. When you use a bird to write with, it's called tweeting. Maui released Heihe and turned to grin at Moana. Flabbergasted, she just stared at him as he brandished the oar, now inscribed with a heart and a fish hook. Could he be serious? There were people to help, entire islands to save, and he thought she wanted an autograph? The demigod raised his eyebrows, then nudged her playfully. I know, not every day you meet your hero, he began. Before he could go off on another confusing ramble, Moana seized one end of the oar and jabbed the other into Maui's stomach. With a whoosh of breath, Maui doubled over. Moana snatched hold of his ear. You are not my hero, she snapped. You are the dirt basket who stole the heart of Tafiti. With her free hand, she pulled the stone from her necklace and showed it to him. And you will board my boat, sail across the sea, and put it back. Tugging on Maui, Moana tried to haul him toward her boat, but he didn't move. What was he made of, stone? Moana gritted her teeth and tried again, yanking with both hands. Maui arched an eyebrow at her, then straightened to his full height, pulling Moana up off the ground so she dangled from his ear like an earring. Feeling silly, Moana let go and stepped back to glare at him. Um, yeah, almost sounded like you don't like me, which is impossible, because everyone knows I only got stuck here trying to get the heart for you mortals, Maui said, brushing off his hands. So what I believe you were trying to say is, thank you. Thank you? Moana repeated incredulously. You're welcome, Maui boomed, an enormous grin on his face. What? No, that's not... I wasn't, Moana sputtered. Maui was the cause of their problems. She wasn't going to thank him for that. But Maui ignored her protests. Yeah, I get it. It's overwhelming when you are in front of someone so cool and powerful. As she watched, one of Maui's tattoos, a picture of himself, began to move. And Maui used one hand to high-five the little mini Maui. What? Moana had never seen a tattoo that could move before. This was getting very weird. Hey, it's okay. Give it some time to sink in. I'm sure it's hard for a mere mortal like you to wrap your head around getting to meet THE Maui. Moana rolled her eyes, but Maui continued, oblivious. I mean, think of all the awesome things I've done. Turning, Maui began walking along the shoreline. His legs were so tall, Moana had to run through the sand to keep up. 
He pointed out his tattoos as he went, and the mini Maui tattoo jumped around as well, acting out each one of his heroic deeds in the ink. Unlike the real Maui, however, the miniature tattoo version still had his magical fish hook. There was a time I raised up the sky, so you wouldn't have to walk around all bent over. As Minnie Maui pushed up some clouds, the humans tattooed on Maui's skin straightened up and cheered. Oh, and let's not forget when I brought you fire so you wouldn't freeze at night. Maui tapped on another tattoo, which Minnie Maui helpfully leapt over to inhabit. As he handed them fire, a group of tattooed people stopped shivering and clamored to thank him. Then there was slowing down the sun. Minnie Maui threw a rope around a fiery circle and capturing the winds for you. The tattoos showed Maui hurling wind into the sail for a group of humans who jumped up and down to celebrate. Not to brag, but there's also the small matter of all the monsters I've slain, Maui continued. A barrage of creatures flew at Minnie Maui one at a time. Swinging his fish hook, Minnie Maui beat them all off as Maui nodded along. Really, I could go on and on. Leaning down, Maui jiggled his bicep as wide around as Moana's entire body in front of her. The Minnie Maui tattoo danced, spinning and whirling and clapping like a one-man band. Wow, this guy has spent far too much time alone with himself, Moana thought, watching the theatrics of Maui and Mini Maui. They'd come to the largest rock formation, which jabbed up into the sky like a thumb, and Moana wouldn't have been surprised if Maui had been about to take credit for the land they were standing on right there and then. Well, anyway, Maui said, his voice full of false modesty. I was happy to help, so you're welcome. And now you can return the favor. Moana opened her mouth to ask what he was talking about, but before she could say a word, Maui picked her up. Whoa, what is he doing? So, I'll just take that boat and we can call it even. Um, no, Moana thought, squirming in his grip, but he was already lowering her back to the ground. Laughing, he plopped her down just inside a cave in the rock. Moana just had a glimpse of solid gray walls before Maui rolled a boulder in front of the tunnel, shutting out the light and blocking her inside. <laughs>